One of the consequences of the COVID pandemic on my family is that we became avid movie watchers. Is that something you can relate to? So we've been watching and revisiting many movie series, one of the most fascinating of which is Star Wars, a franchise owned by Disney. Now, Star Wars has many different characters, human, not so human, and one of my favorites is the rolling spherical robot BB-8. Now, in case you're wondering why on earth the talk about startups has begun by referencing one of the most loved characters of the Star Wars universe, it turns out that the technical expertise behind BB-8 came from a robotic startup that partnered with Disney. The reason this partnership caught my eye is that I'm a business school professor who studies how small and large companies can partner effectively. How did I come to be interested in this? Early in my career as an academic in Scotland, I began to notice that people were doing one of two things. They were either studying large multinationals, or in a few cases, they were studying startups and trying to figure out how these new ventures went international. I began to wonder why we weren't looking at this together. That is, looking at how these companies might partner with each other. So at my first conference, after graduating with my PhD, I very nervously mustered up the courage to ask an eminent strategy professor called C.K. Pralad whether he thought it made sense to study this topic at that early stage in my career. His answer was unambiguous, absolutely. And he went on to add, many startups have no choice but to dance with the big gorilla. Inspired by that comment, over the past decade and a half, I have been studying how startups dance with gorillas, that is, partner with large companies. And in so doing, I have come to realize that when startups partner with large companies, and develop effective strategic partnerships, this is actually a very important ingredient of success. Now, to be clear, there is no magic formula when it comes to startups, and there is no guarantee of success. But this is actually something that is very important. Strategic partnering matters because essentially what startups do is to pursue opportunities and assemble important resources, people or human capital, and money or financial capital based on a suitable business model. Strategic partnering helps open doors to these important resources. For example, Testin, a software company in Beijing, in its early days as a startup, had important relationships with Microsoft and IBM that helped it gain the attention of investors. Also, prospective employees were more confident to work for the startup. And there's a virtuous cycle, potentially. The more the human capital and the financial capital that the startup builds up, the greater its chances of building more and deeper strategic partnerships. In the case of Testin, they went on to partner with Arm and Qualcomm. Now, dancing with gorillas is easier said than done. You see, the human tendency is for people to connect with others who are similar to them. But it is often the case that we get novel information, ideas, and opportunities when we engage with others who are dissimilar to us. That's essentially what dancing with gorillas is. It takes us out of our comfort zone. It is effortful, not effortless. That is why it has been a topic that has warranted study. Now, a question that might arise is, you can see why the startups want to dance with the big gorillas, but why would the gorillas be interested in the startups? 
Well, it turns out that many large companies, the guerrillas, have come to recognize the value of seeking ideas and innovation outside of their boundaries. They can add more value to customers by combining their expertise with the complementary capability of startups. That is precisely why Disney had the partnering initiative it did that enabled it to find that robotics startup to partner with. So returning to the startups, what my research suggests is that the secret ingredient to partnering effectively with strategic partners, especially for startups engaging with companies that are very dissimilar and also more powerful than them, is to be simultaneously optimistic and cautious. And this applies to the entire relationship building process, initiating, consolidating, and extending the relationship. So first, in terms of forming the relationship, it is important to be optimistic and positive and seek strategic partnerships. But at the same time, it's necessary to be cautious to make sure that the prospective large partner is truly serious about engaging. Second, in terms of consolidating the relationship, say, engaging in a joint project, it is important to be optimistic and positive and put your best foot forward in an area of core strength. That's very important to making a good first impression. And by definition, you get exactly one shot at that. At the same time, it's important to be cautious. The challenge is to show what one has and knows to gain the interest of the partner, but not so much that the partner then doesn't need you anymore. Thus, selective revealing is a smart way to go when consolidating the relationship. And third, in terms of extending the relationship, the startup needs to creatively and intentionally find ways to build links to other units and geographic locations of the partner's ecosystem. At the same time, it needs to be cautious and recognize that strategic partnerships don't last forever. I wouldn't be surprised if the startup behind Star Wars BB-8 isn't making Disney toys any longer. Moreover, today's partner can become tomorrow's competitor. So it's necessary to be cautious and build other partnering options for the future. In this regard, partnering by startups is rather different from marriage, which is a metaphor that's often used in terms of business partnering. The starting assumptions in marriage are exclusivity and permanence. But for startups partnering, it is not uncommon to have multiple and temporary collaborations. Now, so pulling all of this together, partnering effectively with dissimilar others is an important ingredient of success for startups. Now, it occurs to me that not everybody in this audience uh, occupies the world of business. So are there any more generally applicable principles that we might think of irrespective of what we do? And I believe there are three key takeaways relating to three mindsets I have observed in startups that have danced effectively with gorillas. These are an entrepreneur These are an entrepreneurial mindset, a collaborative mindset, and a global mindset. First, an entrepreneurial mindset. This is at the heart of what startups are all about. They have to be proactive, innovative or creative, and willing to take risk. Not blind risk, but risk that is managed well and shared with others, including strategic partners. We can all strive to be more entrepreneurial in whatever we do. Second, a collaborative mindset. This is what enables startups to seek out, to be open to, and adept at partnering. We all recognize that we can do more together than we can alone, but that calls for 
being intentional and thoughtful in reaching out, particularly to dissimilar others, and doing this is essential to our happiness and success. Third, a global mindset. This is about looking widely to identify opportunities, to be able to gain inspiration and learning from others f further afield, uh, to be interested in adding value to people outside of our neighborhood. These three mindsets, entrepreneurial, collaborative, and global, can be valuable to us irrespective of what we do. Let me close with a final thought. Perhaps the most intri intriguing thing I have found in my research is that when these mindsets come together, startups are not only able to be successful for themselves, they are also able to make a positive impact on society. Let me give you an example. During the second year of the pandemic, India experienced a terrible wave because of the rise of the Delta variant. At this time, a startup in Bangalore called Cloud Physician, which provides remote technology services to solutions to intensive care units, was in a position to play an important role in providing support to overwhelmed hospitals, especially in smaller cities. One of the reasons it was able to rise to the challenge is that it had a close strategic partnership with Cisco, which gave the startup a stronger resource base, greater credibility, and the confidence to act. I saw a similar ability to make an impact during the pandemic in Hainunu, a healthcare startup in Shanghai, and Bisa, a health tech startup in Ghana, both of which uh, partnered closely with the German pharmaceutical giant Bayer, among other strategic partners. So the coming together of dissimilar others can be good not only for startups or business, but for society more generally. The pandemic has impeded our progress in the global agenda encapsulated in the 17 Sustainable Development Goals. But making progress in terms of health Poverty and inequality, climate change is actually all the more imperative. Startups dancing with gorillas, tiny NGOs working with large foundations, business working with government in the United Nations, the coming together of dissimilar actors can be a very important ingredient in the 17th of the 17 Sustainable Development Goals, which is Partnerships for the Goals. It is my sincere hope that we will all take on the challenge of engaging with dissimilar others to the betterment of ourselves, our organizations, and the world we inhabit. Thank you.